All right, welcome back. This is Total OS Today, Total Technology for Beginners and Beyond. Uh, happy Monday, happy Microsoft Monday. We'll take a look at some Microsoft news. Uh, then we'll um, actually, first off, I'll show you how to fix a incorrect or a broken time, broken clock in your Windows 10 machine. This happened to me this past weekend. I was able to fix it. It doesn't really happen that often, but um, it may have been after an update. I'm not sure. Uh, whatever it was, the clock was wrong, and I was able to fix it. So we'll give this a minute or so to let some people uh, join in this uh, late-minute stream. And uh, I'll show you how to fix a potential problem with your broken Windows uh, clock. Then we'll do some news, and then I'm going to go have some dinner here shortly. Throat's a little bit sore today. I don't know why. Anyway. By the way, there was a very, um, very informative, very honest video on professional video editing in Linux from a channel called EposVox. Check it out. He gave a very honest assessment of why it is impossible, at least for, for professional YouTubers, to rely on Linux for video editing as opposed to say Windows or Mac. But check it out. Uh, I thought he gave a very honest, uh, you know, opinion of what's going on in the world of YouTube and how YouTubers uh, spend hours or less, hopefully not too many hours, editing their videos. All right. Let's go ahead and screen share this and then I'm going to show you how to fix, one way to fix your broken uh, Windows clock. All right, there we go. Screen share. We're just using Google Hangouts. All right, you should be able to see this. So right now, my clock is correct, um, but it wasn't this past weekend. Um, so let me show you what I did. You hit the super key on Windows 10, and what you want to do is go to Services. Uh, you can type S-E-R. That should get you there. Um, if it'll work, let's try it again. <clears throat> uh, it's not working. That's interesting. Uh, let's try it a different way. I may have to reboot this machine after the updates. Uh, <clears throat> I guess I should have checked to see who's in the house, huh? Hang on a second. Uh, let's see. Didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oops. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> All right. Let's do this. We'll say hello real quick. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Why is my throat sore? Let me uh, let me stop this for now. Mm. Anyway, present arms. Hello, Clive. Is in the house. Hello, Ben. Hello, Kyrie. Uh, I I try to stream Mondays. Microsoft Monday. Uh, yeah. It's the last minute thing. So, um, I guess we can wait a few more minutes to make sure we get more people in here. But yeah, I, um, I try to do a stream Monday and Friday. Monday in the afternoon and then um, uh, Friday nights with a thank toss, it's Friday. So, as far as that goes. <clears throat> Then maybe Sunday nights, we'll, me and Spatchy will try to do the um, uh, news nonsense. We did one last night. If you haven't already, check it out. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to what I wanted to show you. Uh, let's go screen share again, and I'll show you this. 
Okay, so once again, if your clock is wrong, uh, what caused the time? It could have been an update, Clive. Um, I don't know. It's it's unusual. Uh, it could have been actually. I actually did a refresh for this Windows 10. Sometimes downloading extensions like um, extensions to make your system more private, less telemetry can cause that issue. I'm thinking, <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but anyway, if you have that issue, you want to go into services. Okay. And this is in alphabetical order. So what we're going to do here is go to the W to Windows Time which would be right here. Now, the problem I had this past weekend was a startup type. This was set to manual. I switched it to automatic. Start. Apply. OK. Reboot it. And that fixed my problem. So if you have your problem with uh, Windows Time, you can go to uh, Windows Settings, just type in Services, and Windows Time. Make sure our startup type is set to Automatic. And that's it. That's this, Now, this is not the only way to potentially fix a broken clock in Windows 10, but this is what worked for me. So if anybody out there has other tips, uh, let me know below in the show, in the uh, comments below in the show notes. But that's it. That's how you can fix a potential problem with Windows Time. Joey, hello. <clears throat> we lost an hour this week, but that was planned. Yeah, well, for us, uh, it's next week here in the States, on November 4th. Yeah. Hello, Joe. How's it going? Joe, have you had a, ever had an issue with losing with a broken clock in Windows 10? Matthew, yes, for dual booting, there is a simple registry. Yes, there is. <clears throat> and I believe you can also fix it in the terminal in Ubuntu. But I think you need to do one or the other and not both. Uh, I think. I'm not really sure. But yes, there is a simple registry entry. I try to avoid the registry for beginners. Uh, but the services entry... Uh, services is still the uh, best way to get this fixed so and it's a simple fix it's not the only fix but that worked for me so but yes you can do the registry entry uh, to use UTC time just like Linux yes uh, BIOS battery is failing uh, uh, it could be you know, I, I do have a battery tester. I guess I can test it. Uh, but yes, that might be the issue. I'm good. I have an ongoing issue with the clock not staying up. The, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what... Now, Matthew suggested a registry fix. Uh, I did not do that. I went into services. Um, Joe, and I'll show you this real quick. I'll show you again. Services, uh, of course, this is a lot alphabetical order. Windows, uh, time. And for me, startup type, make sure this is set to automatic and not anything else. And that's what fixed it for me. And I mean, it's that simple. Hello, Jeremy. All your hello Linux 3D. All your Windows machines, uh, okay, have different time. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to cover that a uh, bit of news in a second. Yes. <clears throat> hello, Mike. All right, let's go into um, the news, and um, Well, yes, IBM, I caught this last night, uh, IBM is going to acquire Red Hat uh, for 30, a cool $34 billion. Uh, maybe this might bring us closer to a, 
national Linux desktop. I don't know. Um, I think it's good news for the open source uh, movement. What do you guys think? But yeah, this is definitely big news. All right, let's go to some Microsoft news. Then we'll go back to the chat and we'll wrap it up. Well, Microsoft is now the world's second most valuable company behind Apple, but ahead of Amazon. Uh, I guess this is in spite of Windows 10, ha huh? I wonder how many people really still prefer Windows 7 over Windows 10. It's just a thought, but um, yeah, Microsoft is doing well. One and a half billion Windows devices, more than iOS, but lagging Android. Now, Android uh, based on Gentoo Linux, so there is the market, there is the potential, again, for a national Linux desktop, as I keep saying. So Windows holds steady at 1.5 billion users. Ah, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. All right. And a little bit of gaming news, Xbox One news, Microsoft surprises fans with a huge Xbox console announcement. All this says basically that they've done very well selling a lot of, you know, Xboxes, gaming consoles. Now, this is one thing that Microsoft has done right. Um, in terms of gaming, they've done very well. Uh, of course, everybody knows the classic Halo game. And speaking of Halo, I think, that, I think the Halo TV series is coming out next year on Showtime. So if you're curious about Halo or are a Halo fan, I believe I caught an announcement last week. Uh, Halo, the TV series, yeah, next week or next, not next week, next year. So be on the lookout for that. That should be very interesting. Anyway. Hello, AJ. Depends on what IBM does with it. Yeah, I guess so. Put a link to show in the forefront, but as soon as money comes in the picture, freedom gets compromised. That's certainly a possibility. But I guess we don't know until we try, Joe. I mean, there is a need for... for and, and, and a market. You know, there are a lot of people who don't want to spend $2,000 on a Mac. Uh, there's probably a lot of people who, you know, use Windows 10 or aren't crazy about all the politics behind it. They're looking for a comparably priced alternative. Uh, that alternative could be Linux. Um, just my thought. IBM will restructure first, so what happens after, we'll see. But open source is worth $32 billion to them. Yeah. I mean... You know, doing updates uh, in Windows is, it's not fun. Um, it takes too long. It's a lot faster in Linux, obviously. Um, yeah. I think if we could have a desktop, a Linux desktop in front of the people, at a store showing him a Windows machine uh, and a Linux machine and we'll say yep you run updates in Windows you have to reboot <laughs> and reboot in Linux you may have to reboot once looks like I am up to date with updates very good well <sighs> I mean, obviously, Joe, it's going to take a certain amount of money uh, to get Linux to the masses. Um, I think we should give it a shot. And really think about it. If it fails, then so what? You and I will still be using it, right? <laughs> President Harms, you lost the will to live during a Windows update. It's that bad? <laughs> Oh, my. Okay. Ah. 
A lot of people like to run with the pack for safety and numbers. Well, I guess there's a certain comfort factor with running Windows. Um, uh, video Bash, MSIG. No, I have not seen that. What's up with that? <laughs> I was going to say, somebody's bashing a video card. Okay. Join the insider preview bills. Nah, I don't think so. How to make Windows better? Use Linux. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, which one's this? Oh yeah, yeah, I mentioned this, Joe. Epos Vox, uh, yeah, I did see it. Uh, I don't think he's too far off. I've said this for years. A lot of professionals, I think he's got over 100,000 people following him. I think he uses Windows and some Mac, but um, he actually uses Linux too. But for professional video editing, uh, at least in his case, you know, multiple monitors and everything that he does gaming, he cannot trust Linux to do his video editing. I completely understand, um, you know, uh, you know what, to each his own, so. But the thing about video editing, Joe, he does a lot more than I do. His his edits are more, uh, how should I say, it? more complicated, more intensive. Uh, and he does, I mean... And it's a full-time job for him. What he does, I believe, is a full-time job, seven days a week. Uh, and he needs something he can trust all the time. And I don't blame him. I think for basic video editing, like what I do, I think Linux is fine. Uh, but, you know, then we get back to, can I completely replace you know, Windows with Linux. And I'm like, until we have a national Linux desktop with some kind of quality standards, I cannot. That's why I have Windows 10 as a backup to what I do. But yeah, I thought it was a good video. Uh, I didn't take it personal. He's just talking about his experiences. Uh, but I saw the whole video and he, 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 did, also, he did also praise Linux. Um... So yeah, he, he gave his opinion, you know, and he, and he does a lot more than I do, so. But that's my opinion, so. I think if we had a national Linux desktop, I think Kden Live should be the, uh, the standard for Linux for video editing. There's always a more pro, pro version for commercial use, but editing home video Linux may be just fine. Yes, totally agree. I totally agree. And I think he does 4K ed editing too, uh, so he needs more, you know, high-end software. I did write on his, <clears throat> I, I did comment, <clears throat> excuse me. I did comment on this video that Linux has the capability to do everything Windows does, but you need to have the support behind it. It's a chicken and egg problem. Linux is a small market share because of a lack of commercial support and it lacks commercial because of a low market share. Yeah. You know, but Google has the resources. Amazon has the resources. The market's built in. There are people there waiting, probably begging for an alternative, you know, to Windows at about the same cost. Uh, but if people don't have it, why should they care? You know. Um, people sometimes exaggerate a little and forget the problems that Windows gives sometimes. Many times are you working a product, of course, that Windows fails. And I have not seen a blue screen in years, uh, Linux 3D. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, the, the issues with Windows isn't so much blue screens. That's very rare. 
at least for me. Multiple machines, that's very rare. Uh, it's the other stuff you know, that we've talked about before, such as telemetry and privacy. But when the you know, blue screen's very, very rare. You want VLC to make an editor. Oh, that's interesting. Well, VS, VLC is an awesome, uh, I have it, awesome player because it has broader support for codecs. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, since we're on that subject here, let me, uh, let me see something. Let's type the Linux versus Windows video editing. And it looks like there's more than one video. Here we go. We have Brian Lunduk, this guy, and Eposvox. Uh, is that Linux? Oh, that's a Linux gamer. Okay. Um, the current state of Linux video editing. Let's see what that says. Use Windows LTSB, it's stripped down, no tracking, no Windows, no, just the basic desktop I should do. Matthew, how much does that version run, uh, LTSB? It sounds like a drug, by the way. Hey, man, can you spare some Windows LTSB, man? I'm just kidding. Well, there's an interesting article here for Linux video editing. Yep, top pro pick, Kaden Live. Depends on what torrent you download. Okay. I think I'll pass, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you could also download a bunch of the nasties. <laughs> Matthew, yes, I, yeah, I, th I think I'll stick with what I have. Uh, yeah. Requires a bulk, oh, bulk volume license, I see. Interesting. Okay. Hobbyist pick, open shot. Okay. Flow blade, I think I tried it once, I didn't like it. Blender is very good, but that's a high learning curve. Um, Shotcut is very good actually. I've tried this both in Windows and Linux. This was actually pretty stable, uh, you know, for somewhat of a basic video editor. Um, Lightworks, I've heard of, but for me personally, uh, Hero, I have not heard of that. Yeah, I'd go with Kaden Live. You can use Kaden Live in, in Windows too, by the way. Um, I'd go with Kaden Live first, open shot number two. Uh, let's see. Yep, the latest kid in Live 18.08.2 has been released. Um, but yeah, a kid in Live is my first choice, absolutely. And there is a beta Windows version still. Okay, very good. Okay, we'll wrap this up here in five minutes. Um, oh, OpenShot is more stable on Windows. Interesting. I uh, don't think I've ever tested OpenShot in Windows. Um, I may have to try that, Matt. Yeah, I have not tried OpenShot on Windows. Interesting. Okay. By the way, a great 
partition tool uh, for Windows Ease Us Partition Master. It's pretty nice. If you know what you're doing. My chair needs oil that's squeaking. Boy, you know what? I've gotten so used to that SSD in Linux. <laughs> it's much faster than this, but anyway. But do check out this. There's a free version of this for um, partition recovery and other tools here. Great tool. Uh, ESIS Partition Master Free. No, this is not being sponsored by ESIS. I just tool I've used a, a tool I've used in the past, uh, and it's pretty nice. So it works for me. Anyway, all right. Any last comments before I wrap this up? How's this for special effects? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Anyway. Ah. <sighs> All right, so I think I'm going to wrap this up for uh, today, for October 29th, 2018. Uh, you guys have a good week. I'll probably catch you Friday night for another Thank Toss. It's Friday. Don't have really a topic yet. Uh, if you haven't already, consider supporting this uh, channel if you wish. All the links below in the show notes. The more supporters we get, the closer we get to a full-time schedule for this Total OS Today technology channel. Uh, I think that's it. If you missed any part of this, you can replay this on how to fix your broken Windows clock. Hopefully, what I showed you will solve the issue. All right, guys, I'm done with this. I will catch you later on in the week. Have a good week. Be safe. Peace.